Hi all, today we are going to discuss about energy stored in the magnetic field and energy density. So let us take for example, I am taking an inductive coil. Let us take for example, I am taking a solenoid. So through this solenoid, I am applying some voltage, time varying voltage so that the time varying current will pass through this coil. So let us assume the self inductance of this coil is equal to L1 and the number of turns in this coil I am representing by N1. So we know that whenever the current passing through a coil is changing, we have seen in our previous class that the EMF will be induced in this coil to oppose the change in the current because it will not allow for a change in the value of the magnetic field. So it will not allow to change the magnetic field. That's why EMF will be induced. That EMF will be given by E is equal to, we have seen that rate of change of flux linkages. That means D by DT of the flux linkages. So this flux linkages is nothing but d by dt of we have seen in our last law this will be equal to n1 multiplied by what is the value of the flux at that instant that means what is the change in the flux so otherwise this i can write as d5 by di that n1 i can take out multiplied by di by dt or this n1 into di by dt we have defined the term as a term l or the self inductance of a coil or we can represent this as minus l into di by dt or from this we can conclude that the opposing EMF will be induced in this which will be depending on the property of the material which is called as the inductance and what is the rate of change of the current, how the current is changing depending on that the EMF will be induced. So if you are applying the KVL in this loop, we can apply that V plus E will be equal to 0 or V is equal to minus E because this way I can apply because minus 2 plus so minus 2 plus. Let us assume the EMF is like this. So from this, V is coming as minus E, which will be equal to L into di by the dt. So let us make our first observation from this. Now coming to the self-inductance, we have seen that L is equal to d psi divided by di because d psi divided by di that is the value or I am assuming that the flux linkages are varying linearly with respect to the current. So from this I can write my total flux linkages will be equal to L multiplied by I. This also we are going to use again. So let us proceed further. So I am taking a coil. So let us assume the voltage is applied because of the voltage some current is passing through this. So the total power that is supplied from here, the power we can take as a product of V multiplied by I the power that is supplied from the source. So out of this power supplied from the source, this power will be supplied for two things. One is for the losses and the remaining one will be stored in the form of magnetic energy. You agree with me? So because inductor can store in the form of a magnetic energy. Now we know the magnetic field that is produced will depend on what is the value of the current at that instant. As the current is changing, the magnetic field is changed. So whatever the extra magnetic field is produced, so that extra magnetic field is stored here because the magnetic field is stored here in the form of some energy or let us take for example, I am taking some time dt. In some time dt, the integration of power we call as the energy, total energy supplied will be, I am representing by dw, dw will be equal to V into I into dt or we can tell that the total energy that is stored so total energy, I am neglecting the value of the resistance or the losses because of the copper losses. So this energy supplied will be used for storing the energy only. So this I can write as integration of V into I into dt. So now I am substituting because V just now I have derived V is equal to L into di by dt. So this I can write as L into di by dt multiplied by I dt. Whether you take small letters or capital letters, actually it is one and the same. So this will be integration because this dt dt will cancel integration of L into I into di. This is what we get. So what is the range of the value of the current that is changing? Initially the current will be 0 and the current is increased up to a value let us assume up to I. So if you do the integration of this, you will get it as half L into I square. So I am just trying to summarize. So the energy stored in an inductor will be if the current is changed from 0 to I, then in that case, the energy that is stored will be equal to half L into I square because the magnetic field that is produced will be stored in the form of energy there or the magnetic field is stored there. The energy is stored in the form of the magnetic field. Like in the case of a capacitor, the energy is stored in the form of electrostatic field. Here it is stored in the form of a 
magnetic field. So, just now we have derived the value of L is equal to d psi by di di or the value of psi is equal to L into i. So, this energy that is there that I can represent as this half L i square, I can represent in terms of the psi also flux linkages also. So, this L into i is equal to flux linkages. So, this will become half into psi into i or this I can represent in the form psi square divided by 2 L. Let us take it as equation number 1. So, we have already seen in our previous chapter the energy stored in a capacitor. We have stored, seen the energy stored in a capacitor is be half Cv square and we have we know that Q is equal to Cv for the case of capacitor because in this case psi is equal to Li and there we have seen Q is equal to Cv. So, when I am substituting Q is equal to Cv, so this I can write as half into Q multiplied by V because Cv I can represent by Q or this I can represent as Q square divided by 2C. So, let us try to see the analogy between these two. So, the analogy between these two, here you can observe that wherever the L is there, here it is coming as C. So, L is coming as C. Then, wherever the current is there, the current is here represented by the voltage. And similarly, wherever the flux linkages are there, here the flux linkages will be analogous to charge in the case of a capacitor. Or, we can write the equations like this, I is equal to C into dV by dt. This is the property of the capacitor. So, similar is the case V I can write as L into dI by dt. This is the equivalent for the case of inductor. Similar is the case Q is equal to integration of I dt. And similarly, here the flux linkages I can write as V dt. The reason is because we know that I is equal to dQ by dt. And we know the value of V is equal to d psi by dt. This is the reason why these equations came. So, now Q is equal to C into V here and here the flux linkages will be equal to L into I. These are the analogous things that means if you want to write the similar type of equations, you have to remember here. So, here you can see in the case of capacitor, the change in the voltage is leading to the current. Here the change in the current is leading to voltage across the inductor or we can tell the inductor opposes the change in the current whereas the capacitor opposes the change in the voltage. So, whenever the voltage is changed, it produces the current there and in the case of inductor, whenever there is a change in the current on the circuit that produces the voltage across the terminals, that produces the voltage across the terminals. So, please remember this one. So, the application of this one is mainly used in the case of choke of your uh, this tube light which you use in your home. So, in the tube light that tube light will be connected like this. So, this will be connected to supply. So, across this we connect one starter will be there. The starter will be connected. So, this will be connected in such a way initially when it is operating it will operate in a normal way that means it will operate through the conduction that means the starter will be closed initially and it will start operating and here we keep one choking coil. So, this will be connected to supply. So, now when the supply is connected, initially the switch will be closed. When the switch is closed, the current will pass like this. That means actually the tube light is not starting, only current is passing through the coil of your tube light or your fluorescent lamp. So, now after some time, this lamp will be treated like this. Here one small heating type of element will be provided and this thermostat will be disconnected. That means this becomes open circuit. So, when this becomes open circuit, I am just erasing this one to indicate that this is open circuit. So, now this become open circuit. So, initially let us assume the current that is passing is equal to I because as this become open circuit that means the circuit is open circuited this current becomes equal to 0. So, whenever the current is changing from I to 0 the EMF will be induced by this coil to oppose the cause. Let us assume your supply voltage is like this and suddenly the current is changed from I to 0 because if it is changing from 0 to I this E will be in opposite direction this is known but now the current is decreasing in order to oppose the change in the current, it will produce the EMF like this. So, the net EMF that is applied between these two terminals will be the EMF that is induced in this plus your supply voltage. Because of this high value of the voltage, the gas will start discharging between these two terminals and your fluorescent lamp will start operating. Okay. Once your fluorescent lamp start operating because the current will start growing, so once the current start increasing, then this EMF induced will be in the opposite direction, it will start acting in the opposite direction because it will not allow to rise in the value of the current because of that the current will be limited. 
that means the choke coil performs two operations in a tube light so initially to start this choke light the voltage induced will be aiding your supply voltage because current will be changed from i to zero by using a starting one smarting starting element or a thermostat and once the circuit becomes operational it will try to oppose the increase in the current or it will act as a current limiting circuit without losing any power so this is the basic operation of a choking coil or application of the magnetic energy how the magnetic energy can be used because here the magnetic energy is collapsing so that is converting in the form of a electrical energy and aiding to your supply this is what is basically happens so now let us see the energy density so coming to the energy density let us take i am having a toroid coil because toroid will be easy to analyze toroid is nothing but a solenoid which is wound in the form of a circular form please remember in that way please don't confuse so let us assume the winding is made like this uniform winding is made these are the connections to this so let us assume the main radius of this toroid i am representing by main radius is rm and now if you are taking the cross sectional area of this toroid this cross sectional area i am representing by a and now if you want to calculate the mean free length of the transmission of the flux because whenever the current is given flux will pass this will be the mean free length so that mean free length i am representing by lm is equal to 2 pi into rm that is a distance that flux travels so let us take for example i am applying a sinusoidal voltage or a time varying voltage because of this the time varying current is produced through this one so we have seen the inductance of your solenoid or a toroid so that we have given as mu into n square multiplied by area divided by the mean free length so a is the area of cross section of this toroid lm is the mean free length which will be equal to 2 pi into rm rm is the mean radius and here n is the number of turns let us assume it is having n turns getting it i hope all the terms are clear so now the energy stored i can write as half into l into i square this is what we have seen so i am just substituting this half into l l is equal to mu into n square a divided by lm this will be multiplied by i square so this i can further simplify it so this i can write as half into mu i am taking out this will be n into i divided by lm whole square so i am separating the terms this i can write as a into lm because lm square is there to compensate that i am multiplying with lm and dividing with lm so that i can combine them so agree with me so now this a multiplied by lm is nothing but area multiplied by the length that will give you the volume so this gives the volume of your material because energy density is nothing but energy per unit volume you agree with me so this i can write as a w divided by a into lm so this is nothing but energy density energy density is energy per unit volume will be half times of mu into ni divided by lm whole square okay now let us see the basic notations which we have studied previously we have seen that b is equal to mu into h and the h for the solenoid or a toroid is equal to n into i divided by lm so these relationship i am going to substitute in this equation so i can write my energy density this will be equal to half times of mu into ni by lm is nothing but h mu into h whole square or otherwise this i can write as half times of b square divided by mu either i can write in this form or otherwise this i can write in the form half times of b multiplied by h because mu into h i can convert as b multiplied by h so half b h so this energy density will be because energy is stored in the form of joules energy density will be joules per meter cube this is my energy density of the material i hope what is energy stored in a magnetic field and what is energy density is completely clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much